Hello again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the PHD2 Static Polar Alignment Tool, or SPA, SPAR. Specifically, I'll show you how to use SPAR to point your scope towards the pole so you can fine tune your polar alignment. You can use this procedure if you are having trouble finding the SPAR reference stars you need to do a polar alignment. To do this, you need to be able to see the region around the celestial pole, and your mount should be fairly well polar aligned already using the polar drift alignment tool. And you should have performed a calibration with your camera. You'll need a camera that is supported in PHD2 and has a reasonable field of view. A guide camera through an off-axis guider is usually not suitable, but an imaging camera could be used if PHD2 supports it. To start out, we launch PHD2 and connect it to a defined profile. In this example, we're connecting both the camera and the mount. Having the correct focal length is important for calculating and reporting the alignment error accurately in arc minutes. So check that it is entered correctly. You can then start the camera looping with an exposure of about one second. This will make it easier to make the mount adjustments later. You might need to adjust the camera gain and or binning to get a good frame rate. Adjust the screen brightness so you can see the stars clearly. You'll need that when it comes to making adjustments later. Make sure the mount is unparked and tracking at its ideal rate, and make sure the scope is pointing near the celestial pole, which means a declination of close to 90 degrees. Start the static polar alignment tool from the tools menu. The SPAR window pops up and if you've got a computer connected mount, the hemisphere is automatically selected. Next tick the manual slew checkbox as we'll be using the manual mode of operation. Now select the star on the main display. Record the position of the guide star by clicking the button that says Get First Position. Now use your mount's controller to slew the mount slowly west. If you're close to the pole, you might be able to see the guide star describe an arc. Slew until the search area, the green box, is well clear of the previous position. Record the position of the guide star by clicking the button that says Get Second Position. Once again, slew west, and when done, record the position of the guide star by clicking the button that says Get Third Position. The main display will show an overlay of the possible reference stars and their orbits around the pole. What we are interested in is the small red cross that indicates where the mount is pointing, also called the center of rotation. If you've done a fairly good alignment using PDA, the red cross should be close to the celestial pole and hopefully in the field of view. If you can't see the red cross, you can estimate its position from the orbits. Otherwise, you can untick the show orbits checkbox to get a clearer view. We want to move that point in the sky as close as possible to the centre of the display. You can't move the cross itself, so find a star close to it and track that. If the cross was outside the field of view, you'll need to first choose a star near the edge of the display in the direction of the cross and move that star to the centre of the display. Then redo the procedure as often as needed till the cross becomes visible. To move your star towards the centre of the display, you slew the mount in declination. 
This might not bring the star to the exact centre of the display, but don't try slewing in right ascension as that won't work. The remaining distance from the start to the centre of the display is due to misalignment between the camera's optical axis and the mount's right ascension axis. It's a form of cone error. Rerun SPAR one last time to check that the cross is close to the centre of the display. You are now pointing close to the celestial pole. You should be able to recognise the stars on the star map on the main PHD2 display. Now slip in right ascension to return the mount to its counterweight down position. You can set this as your mount's home position. By doing this your mount's coordinates will be more accurate and objects will be easier to find.